I'm the storyteller and my stories must be told. I have many stories, tales for both the young and old. I have many voices to describe many places. Many names have I and many faces. In Russia I am Ivan, in Sweden I am Jan. In Germany I'm Johan, in America I'm John. From my many travels I have gathered these tales to teach you good sense when all else fails. Sometimes there are tears, sometimes there is laughter, but always I happily ever after Long ago and far away, there was a mighty kingdom which stretched from the mountains to the sea. This kingdom was ruled by a proud and powerful emperor. Because he ruled so vast a land, he was always kept busy with affairs of state. The chamberlain would press him to sign this or read that. The emperor didn't mind going into battle or raising an army, but he did hate being stuck in the castle. So one day, when the Chamberlain was being particularly annoying and the Emperor was in a very bad mood, he stormed out of the castle. He called for his favourite horse and ignoring the persistent pleas of the Chamberlain that there were many urgent matters to be attended to, the Emperor mounted his horse and cantered away. The Emperor was one of the finest horsemen in the land and there was nothing he liked better than to go out for a good gallop over the fields. But today the Emperor was feeling very bad-tempered. The Chamberlain would never leave him in peace. But it wasn't just that. He was always having to do something. He had to invite ambassadors to lunch or make sure the barons weren't becoming too powerful. It was all very boring. He never had time to enjoy himself anymore. The day was mild and sunny as the Emperor went along the road. He hadn't passed this way for some time. What a beautiful garden that was. Wasn't it part of the Abbey? I wonder where the Abbot is, thought the Emperor grumpily. I wonder if he's working. And because the Emperor was still in a bad mood, he thought he'd go and see, for he felt like shouting at someone. The Emperor looked around and saw the Abbot sitting in the garden. It was a fine state of affairs when Emperors had to work and his subjects didn't. When the Emperor saw the peacefully sleeping face of the Abbot, he was overcome with envy. Why should he look so relaxed when I am not, he thought. Good day, Abbot, he said. The Abbot was quite overcome when he saw the Emperor standing before him. What a beautiful garden, purred the Emperor. Do show me round. The Abbot was very nervous, but he pointed out all the different flowers and bushes and the arrangement of the beds. The Emperor was most complimentary and said it was one of the finest gardens he'd ever seen. But the Emperor's thoughts were far from complimentary. He was absolutely furious that one of his subjects should lead such a peaceful life when his own was so hard and troublesome. Here was this fat, happy abbot without a care in the world, living in this fine abbey with a beautiful garden to fall asleep in. Well, he'd soon give him something to think about. Listen, good abbot, he said coldly. I have three questions for you. 
If you answer them correctly, you may remain here at the Abbey. But if you fail, you shall ride round the town on that donkey over there, riding backwards and holding its tail. The abbot went pale with fright. He was a coward and hated making a fool of himself. The emperor smiled. You have three months to answer the questions. The first is, how long would it take me to travel round the world on horseback, correct to the minute? The abbot had no idea. The second question is, how much am I worth to the penny when clad in robes and jewels? The poor abbot felt very faint. And the last question, your imperial majesty? Tell me what I am thinking, said the emperor, when I next ask you, and then show me that what I am thinking is wrong. The poor abbot was quite overcome. He could answer none of the emperor's questions. What was he going to do? The emperor roared with laughter. His good humour was now quite restored. Yes, he felt much better. He would go and have a good gallop over the fields. That should add some wrinkles to the abbot's brow, chuckled the emperor as he mounted up. Then away he went without even a backward glance at the poor abbot, who was still on his knees in the garden. And the emperor was quite right. For from that moment on, the abbot's life was as miserable as it had been happy before. He had no idea what to do about the emperor's questions. He wasn't a clever man, and they were very difficult to understand. So he prayed that he might find guidance to answer them. No longer did the abbot sleep peacefully. Now he tossed and turned. He was worried by terrible dreams. He kept seeing the laughing face of the emperor. And no sooner had he woken from that dream than another more terrible came. He dreamt of his humiliation, of being laughed at and being made to feel a fool. He dreamt he was being led around the town, riding backwards on a donkey. For being an innocent man, he could think of nothing worse that the emperor could do to him. The abbot's once healthy appetite now disappeared. Not even his favourite dish could tempt him any more. Now he spent all day in the abbey, never going out into his beautiful garden, for it reminded him too painfully of the Emperor's visit. And if for one moment he did forget his worries, he only had to see the donkey and he felt faint again. After weeks of worry, the poor abbot was in the most sorry state. He grew pale and thin. His hair began to fall out, his brow grew wrinkled, and his eyes lost their happy sparkle. He still hadn't found any answers to the Emperor's questions. Then one day, he had an idea. He would go and find someone learned who understood these things. So he went to visit Dr. Frederick. Dr. Frederick was always giving the Emperor advice on important matters, and he knew the art of numbers and figures. Dr. Frederick welcomed the abbot into his study and asked how he could be of help. The abbot was very relieved to be able to tell someone what was troubling him. So he told the learned man all about the Emperor's visit and the three questions he had been given. Dr. Frederick listened as the abbot repeated the questions, then he pondered on them for a while in silence. The abbot waited. Then watched with awe as the doctor went over to his globe. He took up a piece of string and he began to make some measurements. Right round the world, muttered the doctor. And he showed the abbot the length of string. The abbot did not have the slightest idea what the doctor was up to, but he was most impressed. He'd soon have the right answers. Then the doctor rummaged through his books until he at last found what he was looking for. His counting beads. 
right to the minute, mumbled the doctor. Then he went over to his desk and sitting down began to make some calculations. It would take the Emperor three years, eight months, four days and five minutes to ride around the world, said the doctor. The abbot listened, but said nothing, for he did not wish to disturb the learned man. The doctor now began making calculations on how wealthy the emperor was. Again, he scribbled down calculations, he made lots of calculations, and then he made some more calculations. Before saying, The Emperor is worth two million three thousand and four pieces of gold, precisely. Oh, thank you, Doctor, said the abbot. But there is the last question. What will he be thinking? murmured the doctor. Well, he's bound to think nothing just to confuse you. So you tell him nothing is something and therefore he is wrong. Dr. Frederick then handed over his sums to the abbot. The abbot was delighted and thanked the doctor for all his help. The abbot left the doctor's house feeling much better. But try as he might, he could not quite forget the donkey. It still haunted him. Now, he had heard that there was a man called Murstaff, not respected like Dr. Frederick, but feared by the people who visited him, for he dabbled in strange sciences. Some people said he was a fake and a charlatan. But with the thought of the donkey ride still in his mind, the abbot decided to pay Murstaff a visit. It would do no harm to check. Murstaff sat in his filthy room, surrounded by hissing bottles and strange objects. The abbot felt a little uneasy, but he bravely went over to where Murstaff sat, chuckling to himself. I have come to ask your advice on a certain matter, said the abbot a little stiffly, and he told Murstaff the emperor's questions. Murstaff thought for a while, then he turned his globe and began chanting to himself as he drew strange symbols on some paper. The abbot didn't understand a word of it. At last, Murstaff gave a terrible cackle and said, It would take 14 years, 2 months and 4 days to ride round the world. The abbot's heart sank when he heard this. He didn't trust Murstaff at all, but he dared not leave yet. Murstaff was now holding a weight over a coin. He mumbled and chanted strange words. And then opening his eyes, he began to write. As he wrote, he said, Well, the Emperor is worth 20 million, 4,005 pieces of gold. As for what he's thinking, he's bound to be thinking your answers are wrong when, of course, they will be right. The abbot listened with a heavy heart. These answers were completely different from Dr. Frederick's. Murstaff held out his hand to the abbot, so the abbot shook it. He left feeling very much worse. What was he going to do? Dr. Frederick's answers seemed very much more serious than Murstaff's who the abbot was sure was a fake. But could he be sure that Dr. Frederick's answers were right? In a few days' time, he would have to appear before the emperor and tell him the answers. He must be sure that they were right, for he could not bear the thought of the donkey ride if he failed. Not only that, but he would have to leave the abbey. And then where would he go? Oh, dear, thought the abbot. What has my life come to? Behind the abbey there were fields where sheep grazed, 
and because the poor abbot could not bear to stay in the abbey, and he had no wish to even look at his garden, he went for a walk across the fields. Here he felt a little of the peace he had once known. Growing tired, he sat down on the grassy slope. Close by sat a shepherd tending the flock. When he saw the abbot, he got up and went over to him. Now the abbot had once sent some food and clothing to the shepherd's wife when she was ill, so the shepherd wanted to pay his respects. But when he introduced himself, the abbot barely noticed, so deep was he in gloom. Excuse me, good abbot, said the shepherd, but you look troubled. Can I be of any help? Thank you, good shepherd, said the abbot sadly, but no one can help me. Please, said the shepherd gently, trust me, let me help. So the abbot told the shepherd of his great distress, of how the emperor had come to visit him and asked him three questions which he must answer. But when the shepherd heard the abbot's sorry tale, instead of frowning, he gave a big smile. Listen, good abbot, said the shepherd, don't be sad. If you will lend me your cross and robes, I will go before the emperor instead of you and answer your questions. The shepherd was quite serious. Would you do that for me? cried the abbot, almost in tears. Of course, said the shepherd. I'm happy to repay your kindness. The abbot was so delighted that he hugged the shepherd. The shepherd was very glad to see the abbot looking more cheerful. The abbot was so happy. He hadn't felt like this for months. He walked home with a spring in his step. At last his worries were gone. For if the shepherd went before the emperor and answered the questions correctly, all would be well. But if he should get the questions wrong, then it was the shepherd and not the abbot who would have to ride around the town on the donkey, if indeed that were to be the punishment. At last he could go and sit in his garden without feeling upset. And for the first time in months he felt hungry. The day arrived when the abbot was to go before the emperor. Word came that he was waiting outside. The emperor was told. He had forgotten all about his wager with the abbot, and he was curious to see if the abbot still looked so fat and happy. The servant asked the abbot to follow him into the emperor's chambers to where he was waiting. The emperor was quite happy to put aside his letter writing to test the abbot, for it was much more fun. The abbot walked respectfully up to the emperor and bowed. You look a little thinner, chuckled the emperor. Have you the answers? And much to the emperor's surprise, the abbot didn't quiver or fall on his knees, but said very calmly, Yes, I believe I have the right answers, your imperial majesty. Well, how long would it take me to ride round the world then? asked the emperor crossly. The abbot walked slowly over to the window and looking up at the sky said, If your majesty were to leave the moment the sun rose and travelled round the world keeping pace with it, it would take but 24 hours. The emperor was stunned into silence. Now, what about the second question? How much did the abbot think the emperor was worth? He must be correct to the penny. The abbot held up his cross and said, Our lord was sold for 30 pieces of silver. I know your majesty wouldn't pretend to be worth as much as Christ, so you must be worth one piece less. Well, you answered the first two questions said the Emperor crossly. You better not fail on the third. Tell me what I am thinking. You're thinking I am the abbot. Of course I am. The abbot threw back his cowl, and there stood the shepherd. Well, I am not. So what you were thinking was wrong, smiled the shepherd. The Emperor laughed. He'd been caught. Now he and the abbot were square. I must congratulate you, said the Emperor, though I know you not. Ask what you wish and it shall be yours. I will make you the abbot if you want. No, thank you, your majesty. 
All I ask for is that the abbot be left in peace to live out his days at the abbey, for he is a good man. The emperor readily agreed. He was much impressed with the shepherd's loyalty. The shepherd took his leave of the emperor and went to find the abbot. The abbot was in the field tending the sheep, for they could not be left without a shepherd. And since the abbot had given the shepherd his robes, he did not think it would be quite the thing to wander round the abbey dressed in sheepskins. The abbot was waiting eagerly to hear what had happened at the court. He did hope the shepherd didn't have to ride the donkey, though the shepherd had assured him that he was very fond of the animal. But here came the shepherd, hurrying towards him. What happened? cried the abbot. Did you get the answers right? And he would not be satisfied until the shepherd had told him everything that had happened at court. When he heard the shepherd's answers, the abbot felt very humble and a little ashamed. He had answered the questions so simply, but no one could argue with them. The abbot was very touched by the shepherd's great kindness to him and offered him a job at the abbey. But the shepherd said he was very happy tending his sheep and had no wish to change his job. He was just glad that the abbot now could enjoy life again. The abbot was able to enjoy the delights of his garden once more. Now his peace of mind had returned. Nowadays he never took his good fortune for granted. Whenever he saw a poor or needy traveller pass the garden, he would always offer them the hospitality of the abbey. He would take them inside and give them plenty to eat and drink. Now the abbot's days were filled with peace and joy from helping others less fortunate than himself, all thanks to the shepherd. And the donkey was always there to remind him, lest he should forget his good fortune.